Hello everyone, it is I, Ryan, also known as the Love Bat. And so I'm back once again to go ahead and uh, bring you guys another draft video for all my dear viewers out there that enjoy Magic the Gathering card games or just watching me sort of play games, share my experiences, and in some cases my strategies and build ideas for what I'm doing and uh, maybe you just find it interesting or fascinating and so Whatever your reasons for joining me today, I hope you all enjoy it. And uh, as you can see here in the sort of news postings here on the front page, there's going to be a bit of a rotation going on with the um, the card sets here in Magic the Gathering that are going to be featured in um, Standard. So they sort of rotate out old formats that are like a year or two old or whatever it is, however old that they are. And then they bring in new sets in the next couple of uh, months or so to go ahead and rotate into the standard form of play. So if you go over here and go to this, sort of like standard ranked and all these other ranked sort of standard sort of formats or whatever, or at least a standard format, they have certain card um, sets and things like that that are in standard. So obviously if you want to play in standard, like ranked formats, for example, and do all that and uh, rank up, then there's only certain sets that you can use for the cards and stuff in your decks. And some of the um, decks that I have here in my deck list, they're featuring old sets or cards from older sets that are going to be rotated out. So sometime soon I'm going to get to showcasing those decks before I can no longer play them in standard and uh, at least show you guys at least once uh, what the decks are like and uh, before they end up going into the historic format where you can use any cards that you want and they end up having lots of other sort of, uh, shall we say it, stuff that goes on in historic, uh, historic because there's all kinds of cards that you can use from any previous set that like ever like existed or any old cards that uh, people might have played back in the yesteryear. Um, we're going to go ahead and go, I think, for a traditional draft for this time around, which I believe is the best of three format. Yeah, so you play best of three. Basically, you play against uh, three different opponents in a best of three sort of series. And so it's like best two out of three. If you beat them two times, then you win that um, set with the players, the match um, against the player. And then you play against another player, and um, you play three players no matter how many games that you win or lose. And so in those three matches of so the best of three, um, you basically have to try and beat all three of your opponents, and then you build also a sideboard along with your main deck. So that way, based on your first and potentially second game with your opponent, you can go ahead and bring in different cards that might be good in the matchup that you have against them. So you might build more based off of a sideboard, and you take cards occasionally during the draft that might be good sideboard options, even if you're probably not going to go ahead and play with it in your main serve deck which is your main sort of 40 cards and so we're going to go ahead and do a traditional draft in the Baldur's Gate format which is like an alchemy format I guess I didn't explain that maybe as well as I could have in the first video that I did but alchemy is like a slightly separate format from standard there's still plenty of cards in this set that are a reprint from the Forgotten Realms set which are cards that can be used in the standard format um, Alchemy Horizons or the Alchemy format in general is not something I'm totally familiar with, but because this is the most recent new set of cards in Magic the Gathering Arena, I wanted to go and do the drafts of this format because I didn't come around soon enough to um, making videos for Magic the Gathering Arena, I guess, to do it for, say, the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set that was around a couple months ago, which was one of my more favorite sets of... Uh, Magic the Gathering in recent years, so I would say that the Neon Dynasty Kamigawa set or the Call Deem set from I think two or three years ago, I can't remember, was probably are probably my two favorite sets that I've seen on Magic the Gathering Arena as far as introducing new cards and mechanics and such, and are, were probably the um, most fun for me to go ahead and play in as far as the draft format goes. They didn't have too many of the feel bad rares, I guess as some people call them, where um, if someone has that particular rare or mythic rare in their deck, then it makes it to where it's almost impossible to beat them unless you have a removal spell to remove it from the battlefield, basically. like a, Usually it comes in the form of creatures, but occasionally there might be a really strong enchantment spell 
um, that can kind of either wipe the board and completely, you know, flip the tide of the game against you, or maybe it kind of has a really strong effect based on putting things into the battlefield. Um, I know that there's a couple of, um, in the Zendikar Rising set, there were a couple of very, very strong landfall cards that were kind of like, once they got these landfall cards under the battlefield, then if you weren't able to deal with them in one or two turns, then they took over the game and then you'd kind of, it would be like a snowball effect where you couldn't deal with it after the first turn or two they were out there. So there was like a, there's a card called Scoot Swarm. That's like a landfall card where it generates tokens by putting lands in the field. And if you have enough lands in, under your control, then it ends up basically, how shall you say it? Producing so many tokens because the tokens become a copy of the Scoot Swarm. And then they generate more tokens and then they multiply like a bunch of uh, blood sucking locusts. And then they just uh, end up getting so prominent that unless you have like a sort of sweeper removal spell, then you're basically fucked. <laughs> like that's the way that some cards and uh, some formats kind of worked in the past where it was like a feel bad card to go up against. And so I think that this set, the Baldur's Gate set and the Kamigawa set that I talked about and then the Kaldim set, which is the set that came after uh, Sundakar Rising. The three of those sets, I think were these three sets were basically, in my opinion, very good and fun to play. And they have some good individual cards that can make a fun deck idea for constructed play and playing things outside of the drafts format. And they didn't have too many of those uh, feel bad rares where it's like, okay, I mean, there's going to be strong cards no matter what. And some cards are just kind of uh, throwaway cards that you're never going to play, even if you're playing in that particular color. But they don't have as many of those feel bad rares and uh, legendary type cards that they're going to feel like impossible to beat if you're playing against them. So anyway, since it looks like it's taking a while to go ahead and uh, find a get enough players here for the draft, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and I'll get back to you guys and uh, every one of my viewers once I go ahead and uh, have enough players show up here and then we're going to go ahead and start the draft. So I'll pause the recording and I will see you then. All right, we are back and it looks like we have all these slots uh, ready. And so it is time to go ahead and get this party started for the best of three draft here. Let's see what goodies await us this time around compared to the first draft where we got lots of, shall we say, Battlecry goblins that have uh, showed themselves once again. So this is going to be a very good pickup if we want to go with that route again. We also have a Raphael, Fiendish Savior, which is a very good build-around card for Demons, Devils, Imps, and Tieflings. And there are some in the set. There's not very many, but there are some. There's the... Lapis Orb of Dragonkind, which is very good for a dragon deck, but blue isn't usually that strong overall. So as far as as far as ramp, this is only good in a dragon deck because blue is usually best for a dragon deck and not many other archetypes. There's a gate, which is basically a good um, special land, uncommon land that gives you uh, an ability to get an extra card in there. Um, Priest of Ancient Lore is a really good card. I'm going to select this because I'm probably going to take the Battle Cry Goblin again. I mean, I opened it pack one, pick one, and it's a great build around if you can find cards. This is uh, Reckless Barbarian is good for ramp. Um, Unexpected Allies can give a card double team, which can be good for, say, Priest of Ancient Lore with into the battlefield effects and things of that nature. So, And then uh, double team, I didn't really explain much before, but double team, basically you go and get a card of double team, you attack in with it, and then after you attack with it, you get an extra copy in your hand. You saw that in the previous game with some uh, double team cards. I had like the Genocide Rabble Rouser, but it's a way to get yourself additional gas and get yourself additional creatures on the board. And there are some cards that are very good with it. So we opened uh, Jahira, which is an excellent green card. Another one of these specialized cards where you discard the card from your hand. If it's a particular color type, then you can specialize this card into any particular of these uh, different effects here. So you can get different things with different colors, which make these very splashable. 
if you're doing like a three color deck even, you can do one of these kinds of cards. Monk of the Open Hand is great for aggro, which is what red-white usually tends to be, so I'm going to go with Monk of the Open Hand for my pick. Four Scared Troll Keeper is also very good. You get uh, information about someone's hand from it as well. Minimus Containment there, some good removals, enchantment removal. Alright, so I'm going to go for the Dragon's Fire here. It's a very good removal spell. We end up with a couple of dragons, like Young Red Dragon maybe. There's also another... Um, this is a rare red colored dragon, which is like four, five or six mana, which can also be very good with the dragon's fire to reveal it and then deal like five damage or something for two mana, which is very good. Um, other good picks in here could be Celestial Unicorn if you're like in a life gain type deck. If you're confronted by robbers. This can be decent if you like to go wide with token generation or having sacrifice fodder for like black white decks with like deadly disputes and. Uh, things like that. Flaming Fist Officer is good for the blank deck and anything that uses sacrifice synergies. Arcane Archery is a pretty good combat trick to either get past people with Trample or use it to, just as a general combat trick with instant speed. Null Hunter was a good decent sort of red green aggro card that can uh, eventually get bigger. All right, so we have some red-white in here still. So, I mean, it looks like red-white could be an open archetype. It's another Celestial Unicorn for the life gain type decks, which we're not really going to be going into, but it's still going to be a decent pickup for someone who gets, like, a green card, like the um, the green card Endkeeper for two mana that's in green that can gain you life when a creature comes into play. Gate to Manaborn, or Manaborn is pretty good for just free slot in the deck for green. Rescuer Twinga um, is pretty good as a combat trick, and it can also protect creatures from removal and allow you to get more into the battlefield effects, which is good for a blink deck. I think I'm going to go for Fiend Lash because it's the rare here. I know it's kind of slow, but if we get like a high power creature, like say a Battlecry Goblin that can trade off with somebody and pump itself, then Fiend Lash can end up dealing quite a bit of damage to your opponent. And if they have a Planeswalker that they're able to get into their deck, then... I'm not sure how many Planeswalkers are in this format. I'm not really familiar with too many of them being in this format, but if they do have any Planeswalkers, we can also kill them with the Fiend Lash. So it's going to go well with Battlecry Goblin or Pumped Up Monk of the Open Hand, so we get value out of it if they get killed. Patriarch's Humiliation. I think I misremembered uh, mis uh, it as being Patriarch's Humiliation, but... Um, in the previous video, but Patriarch's Humiliation is what it's actually called, and it's a one mana removal spell, which will be good in our deck because we're going to be getting lots of smaller creatures and being aggro, so we can do this for one mana and then deal damage to something and have it perpetually lose all abilities. So if they end up uh, being able to get something back from the graveyard and the opposing deck, then Patriarch's Humiliation will prevent them from being able to get value off of the cards getting them back from the graveyard. So we have two very good picks here. We either have Ambergris, Citadel Agent, which is a nice, hasty creature that can specialize. And we can get some pretty good um, effects here. And we can go ahead and get some possible effects here based on red and white. And then we have Kobold Warcaller, which gives a creature haste that is in our hand. So I really want the Warcaller, but a 3-mana, three 3-2 three, haste creature that has some upside and allows us to draw for more gas in case we're getting flooded in the mid game. I think I like that idea quite a bit. Um, Devoted Paladin is actually not bad here because if you get a Kobold Warcaller and give this haste, then you get a 5-5 Vigilance creature on turn 5, so that can be very strong. Gate to the Citadel would be the more safe pick because it's a, basically a free card for our deck and we're pretty much guaranteed to be like a likely a red-white sort of deck, which seems kind of open from the cards that have been passing to us but there's a chance that we may not be white we don't have we have a couple of really good white cards but red is the main color that we seem to be into right now all right so valor singer oh methods enthusiasm this is a good removal spell two mana four damage it's only sorcery speed but uh yeah you can go ahead and you can take out like say an opposing 3-1 creature and then get some um, perpetual plus x plus o to the next creature that we cast so say we end up getting like a battle cry goblin cast out after using this and then we get like fiend lash on it then we can deal a bunch of damage even if they decide to kill the battle cry goblin so 
this is looking uh, pretty good for us right now. Everything's coming together, and wow, we got a gate here anyway after passing the other one. So yeah, red-white definitely seems open. At least red seems very open. We've gotten lots of uh, red cards on the wheel, so we're going to take the gate. Reckless Barbarian is a decent two-drop, but it's not necessarily an aggro-type card unless you're maybe in a dragon deck where you can get value off of being a dragon. Um, Unexpected Allies is decent for aggro because you get double team and you can get some more extra gas going and get more cards they can put into play. Uh, we don't really have any treasure token stuff for Jaded Cell Sword and being aggro, so we're just going to go for Unexpected Allies here because that's double team. And if we end up getting uh, Liara of the Flaming Fist in red white um, that we got in our previous deck, then she can be very strong with cards that have double team and we can get multiple copies of basically into the field. Um, neither of these combat tricks are necessarily desirable, but I guess of the two of them, Valiant Farewell might be better because we can at least draw a card off of this. And it can go ahead and be part of an aggro plan for, say, Fiend Lash and then making it um, more difficult to deal with things. All right, so we're just getting all the red. Reckless Barbarian will just go and take this. And, uh, it'll be a filler kind of two drop. Maybe Incessant Provocation on the sideboard can be okay for us. And we wheel Cobalt War Collar anyway. My goodness, that is the perfect wheel. How on earth did that get all the way around? Like for any aggro deck or even just a red deck, red black, red white, a dragon deck that gets like haste for a big sweet dragon in the late game. Like this is a very good card that should not have wheeled around. <laughs> okay, so we have Horn of Valhalla. And this is going to be excellent because along with being an adventure card, um, we're going to try and get lots of creatures out. And if we have uh, some double team cards that we can get around here, like Genocide Rabble Rouser or the Soldiers of the Watch that have double team and can get like extra copies of themselves and can play out some more gas and uh, more put some more heat on the opponent, then Horn of Valhalla can be very, very good. Scouting Hawk isn't really that great. It might be good in black white sacrifice decks, similar to a uh, Pilgrim's Eye for getting lands and such. Mooncaller Cleric is good. Giant Fighter Beetle would be great on the wheel. There's a blue gate, which blue is usually open. Stick together. What's this one do? I'm not familiar with this one. Each player chooses a party. Okay, so we don't really have much in the way of party type cards. Um, we have one Cleric, and that's about it for the party card types. So we can't really do anything with this. Probably better in Constructed, but we're just going to go with uh, Monk of the Open Hand again. We seem like a very aggro type deck that wants to just curve out and we need to get some more three drops and four drops, but a one drop of upside and the right colors, I think it's going to be very good for us. Priest of Ancient Lore is the better overall card, but since we're not really a life gain deck, uh, we, want just, we want to just aggro and curve out, I think, in this kind of deck, red-white aggro. Bone Collar Cleric again is good. This might be good on the wheel for an aggro plan. Uh, the Fire Beetles there as well is a good double team card that we would want to get. Alright, so we have some great cards in other colors. Um, Innkeeper is the life gain card that we talked about earlier in Green White Life Gain. It's good with the Celestial Unicorns, like this one right here. And then there's a Green White Cleric card called Trawasara. That is excellent in the life gain deck and they end up getting uh, bigger when you gain life. Sepulcher Ghoul is good in the red-black sacrifice deck, and maybe if it in uh, black-white in some cases. Rabble Rouser, though, is excellent in our deck. It's a good aggro card. Double team gives an extra copy. If we get the Liara of the Flaming Fist in one of these packs, it'll be excellent. And it's just an all-around great aggro card. Noel Hunter is decent in a green deck. It's kind of a nice little two-drop with some upside, depending... All right, so there's no real red in this pack, but we do have Guiding Bolt, which is a very good sideboard card. If we end up going against a deck that has lots of top-end sort of cards, then this is going to be an excellent card to deal with any of the big fat creatures that they have that are going to be trying to get past all of our smaller creatures, basically. So Ranger Squadron is good, somewhat decent for top-end as far as an aggro deck, but it's a bit slow for an aggro deck. This is better than a blank deck, and we don't really want to remove our creatures from play. So, Guiding Bolt is a good sideboard card. Meteor Golem, I think, is too expensive when you can't really have any treasure generation right now to ramp into it. So I'm just going to take the, at least the good sideboard card for Guiding Bolt. 
Another Ambergris. I will take that and I will be happy about it. So another hasty creature that can get in there and we can... The cool thing about specialized cards that I didn't realize this when I first read the mechanic back in early in the format. When you specialize a creature, it's no longer the same copy of the creature that it once was. So like the three mana Ambergris, when you specialize it, becomes an entirely different creature. And so you can get another Ambergris onto the field even though it's legendary. So... That's going to be a nice little mechanic if I can specialize it and then get the other one onto the field. Rally Maneuver would be halfway decent as a combat trick, but I just want to take the card that's more guaranteed to make the deck and not just be like a sideboard combat trick. Um, Don Marine Cleric is maybe just a decent sideboard card in case the other deck has like enchantments and stuff like that. Flaming Fist Officer is... Not that great for our deck. It's better for the blank deck and anything that uses like sacrifice type cards, which we don't have. I'll just go ahead and take the Dawnbringer Cleric for sideboard. You you find some prisoners is also a good sideboard card, but I think that uh, creature sideboard card probably better for our deck. Wrath Weapon, um, not really what we're looking for. We don't really have any dragon type cards, and most of our creatures right now would end up dying to it that we have. So that's not really the kind of card that we're looking for. Let's just go with the double team card that can be pretty aggro and it's going to be good with Liara of the Flaming, uh, Flaming Fist if we end up finding one. Um, Dawnbringer Cleric and Breath Weapon maybe would be good for sideboard if there were no other options, but we're just going to take what we can get. Steadfast Unicorn is better with token generation, even though it's a it's not a bad one drop. It's similar to a... A card from Zendikar Rising, a 1-2 Warrior card, but this is only like once per turn, or only during your turn, I mean, and you can't do it on defense, so I'm just going to go for the 5-drop Fireball and get some more removal, and if I cut Fireball, then I can maybe just use it on sideboard. Alright, so Giant Fire Beetles is a great pickup here, just more double team. Uh, we can just get double team going here, Unexpected Allies might make the deck, we just double team and get in as many creatures as we can, basically, so... Get Menace, get Double Team, get some more gas, and I get a Young Red Dragon on the wheel here is very good. So Token Generation can at least help us maybe ramp into like a Devoted Paladin or maybe a Warriors of Teamot as well. So we get the Double Team value as soon as we can. So and it's a good aggro card. It flies over the top, gets some damage in there. And I guess uh, Ranger Squadron at the very least, maybe a sideboard card if we go up against a deck of, uh, excuse me. If we go up against a deck of a bunch of flying creatures, then maybe it's good for sideboard, and we'll take this for sideboard, I guess. Combat trick. That can protect against removal in some cases, and then maybe this. Alright, so I'll go ahead and put one unexpected allies on the sideboard. I might have one in the main deck. Ooh. Go Ryan Wise Mentor. This seems like a very interesting card if you have a decent build around for it. There are some adventure cards in this set, not that many, but there are some. And uh, anyone who's played the Baldur's Gate video games will definitely recognize them, uh, at least that character. So, um, the Gate would be a free card for the deck. It could wheel. Soldiers of the Watch is better for our deck than the Gate, but the Gate is like free value, and we almost already have a deck here, so. Uh, maybe we just take one gate, and then maybe we can hope we can wheel the other gate. Maybe Soldiers of the Watch will wheel. We can't really splash Go Ryan. We don't really have the treasures and the different things for that. So let's just go and take the gate and not look back. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll wheel the other gate. So we don't really want Rescue or Twinga in this deck. We want to just be aggro. It can protect against removal, but we have ways to punish removal already with like Fiend Lash and some of the um, cards that can end up getting us extra value with uh, the Fiend Lash. Uh, we can't really splash this either. We don't have enough splash material or ways to splash with the uh, mana base. So let's just get the Blessed Hippogriff, which is a very, very good card. It can help us to fly over the top and is a good combat trick for Indestructible. Maybe we might have something like uh, one of these, the Cloak of the Bat might wheel for an aggro deck, maybe. All right, so we have a very good aggro card with the Steadfast Paladin. I will take that. It goes very well with the Horn of Valhalla. It goes good with the Kobold Warcaller to get it in on turn two if they haven't played a creature yet for the opponent. And uh, since it ends up having Lifelink, it's very good with the Fiend Lash, good with the Horn of Valhalla. 
good with any of the combat tricks that boosts its power to get us more life gain in there, so... And then, what would we hope to wheel? I mean, Trap Finder's a random one drop, um, but it's not really that great for our deck. It's good if it dies, we can trade with it, and then maybe we can go ahead and give something random creature haste, I guess. Oh, wow. What does this do? So it flies, it creates treasures, it's just a 6 mana, 6 5 flying baseline, but oh, Liara the Flaming Fist, oh god, what do we do here? Hmm. And a War Caller and a Red Dragon, jeez. This pack has everything we'd want, honestly. This is just like, this is Christmas. <laughs> this is like opening up Christmas presents and you have to choose which one you want, but I think Liara the Flaming Fist is better for the aggro plan, we can't really ramp into... We don't have enough ramp elements to ramp into the dragon. I'm just going to take the better aggro card and oh, we are rewarded because we get another double team rabbles rousers. So I will take that and be happy about it. We have some removal in here, but we have some decent removal. We have dragon's fire. We have some combat tricks. And then we also have just lots of double team cards to just get more gas in there. We have a top end fireball as well to pump in some more damage. So um, I'm just going to go with the Rabble Rouser here because it's just too good for our deck. Okay, so another Young Red Dragon. Yes, please. It's a good 4-drop for our curve. It generates a treasure. It can potentially ramp us into maybe some of our upper-end double-team cards. And Devoted Paladin is very good if we get the War Caller out there. Trap Finder is a 1-drop, but this is a, something with upside. And maybe on the sideboard we can fly over the top if we need to. War collar? Jeez, my god. These war collars are just wheeling around. They just they just don't want to escape our grasp. You know, that's just what these things are. They are calling our name, no pun intended, and uh, we're going to take that and never look back. Too good for our deck. And then we get another... Th we get rewarded with a 3-1 aggro card here that can get us some card information about the opponent's hand, and it's just a 3-1-2 drop. So I'm going to go ahead and take that, and we're going to have some... Uh, Definitely has some cuts to make, and oh wow. Breath weapon for sideboard, I'll just... Even just as a sideboard card, if they have like lots of token generation, then maybe we can play this. Um, we don't really have any dragons that would avoid being damaged by it, and Rabble Rouser is one of the only creatures that we have that wouldn't die to it, but... I mean, Liara of the Flaming Fist might make it to where our creatures wouldn't die from it, so I mean, there is that. Maybe it's just a decent sideboard card here if we need it. Uh, maybe Cloak of the Bat on sideboard if we need to fly over the top and be pure aggro and remove something else. Maybe just a Trap Finder for a random one drop here if we feel like we want it. Another War Oh god. This is unfair. Like, why are these things wheeling around? Kobold War Collar should not be here, but I will take it anyway. <laughs> I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm stealing from the poor here by getting so many war callers. And Devoted Paladin is awesome with the war caller, so. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do here? I am feeling just so giddy. I'm like a kid in a candy store here, like, what is not to like about this deck? The only thing not to like about this deck, I guess, if you're looking at it more objectively, is that we don't have too much removal, but we have plenty of combat tricks to make up for it, so... Um, let's get rid of the Ranger Squadron. I think we have better things to be doing in an aggro plan. Um, we have two gates to so sort of free lands here, so. Um, but they come onto the battlefield tapped, and we definitely want to play the Kobold War Caller in turn one, so I think I'm going to go with one less white mana here. And then play a couple extra red, I guess, because we have two tapped gate cards here in an aggro deck, so. So, what shall we do here? Um, give me one moment. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording so that way I can go ahead and uh, blow my nose real quick and then I'll get back to the making my cuts. All right, apologize for the pause there. It's just my nose is getting, uh, getting all stuffy and I don't want the... Um, I don't want my viewers to have to deal with my nose blowing like a train into the microphone. So, I just wanted to go ahead and pause the recording there and take care of that real quick. So... Reckless Barbarian, I don't think we need it. It's just, uh, 
in this deck, it's mainly just a 2-2 with uh, not much upside. We didn't really... We could have taken the 6-mana Dragon and ramped into it with the Reckless Barbarian, but I think that Liara is just the better plan for this deck. We do have some double team cards. We could possibly, potentially have two Amber Grisses onto the battlefield with uh, specializing the first one. Battle Cry Goblin could get extra Goblin tokens that are technically the same card and work with Liara. We have Rabble Rousers with double team. We have Fire Beetles with double team. We have three War Collars and two Monks of the Open Hand. So Liara, I think, is going to be very good in this deck. And then we can also do the um, double team effect here as well, which I don't think that I realized that at the... Um, I forgot about Liara having that secondary mana ability there to give a card double team um, as a mana sink. I don't think I realized that in my first draft. And so I'm going to have to take advantage of this during the second draft, and then maybe I can give like Ambergris double team. Um, Hippogriff with double team might be really good. And then... Uh, Devoted Paladin with double team would be pretty awesome because if I have a war caller to give it uh, haste, then you just basically have like free value off of getting another 4 4 in there and then pumping the team again. So I definitely want to keep all my one drops because this is an aggro deck that would love to curve out. So keeping the one drops I think is a good idea. Monk of the Open Hand is going to be very good here, especially with double team and doing two spells in one turn. Uh, maybe Valiant Farewell is more of a sideboard card. It's a combat trick with a slight amount of upside and it does work well with the Fiend Lash. If we want to trade a creature, then deal damage to the player, but... Maybe not what we're looking for. Um, oh, excuse me. Gas, uh, if you heard that. Um, we all get a bit of gas sometimes. Um, I guess Unexpected Allies just isn't good enough here. I mean, we have... It's really good with Liara and getting double team, but she can already give double team if we get her onto the field anyway. So I think as a consistent way to get double team to our party or our team basically Liara is just a better option built in let's do red white tag tag dream team so it's going to be double team tag team dream team tag dream team so or maybe just a th um Jeez, I'm just trying to adjust the name here. Tag Team Dream. There we go. So what are the final cuts going to be? I could very well go for... And last time in my first draft, I was like, yeah, 15 lands, I agree with it. Even though I said 16 lands when I was talking about the previous deck, but I meant to say 15 lands because 15 lands for an aggro deck is very reasonable if you just want to make sure that you keep drawing action in there. We have enough double team and enough one drops to where I think we can still get enough action and do good with 16 lands and then being able to seek a non-land card with, this, with our two gates here. So, I mean, 9 red, 7 white kind of makes sense for this deck, even though we do have some one-drop creatures that we want to get out in white. We have double red. We have many more red cards, and the red cards have double team on them. And we have young... And we have young red dragon that can give us a treasure token to be able to give us uh, white, uh, white mana, basically. So, more red than white, I think I agree with that. 16 lands, I think I can do that because I have the Rabble Rouser Mana Sinks and, I, and now I know that I can Mana Sink with Liara here as well for extra gas. We have a couple of high-end cards that we want to get out. Devoted Paladin is very good with the Kobold Warcaller because then you can attack with them as a 5-5 Vigilance creature, which is very good on turn 5. Maybe even turn 4 with the Young Red Dragon. Hmm, what we'll to cut here? Uh, let me go ahead and pause the recording here one more time so I can blow my nose yet again. 
All right, I have returned. I don't know what's going on with me today. Maybe my sinuses are acting up. Maybe it's the weather. I don't know, but uh, my nose has just felt kind of stuffy today, so I hope my voice doesn't sound too nasally for everybody. Um, anyway, I'm trying to get around to my cuts here. Maybe Warriors of Tiamat works really well with Liara, but since she can already generate double team for better cards, maybe Warriors of Tiamat isn't the card we're looking for because we already have the Kobold War Callers that can give Devoted Paladin haste, and that's a much better card for us. So maybe Warriors of Tiamat, just not what we're looking for. And then Warcar and Liara can make the Devoted Paladins much better and just kind of get in there with lots of aggro and uh, pumping the team and then being like kind of like vigilant on that same turn and then you can give it like double team and get another one out there and pump them again on the next turn, which would be pretty awesome. So what do we have for removal for? I'm just looking at my final cut, but I'm checking out like what kinds of non-creature cards I have. I have Humiliation, Methods Enthusiasm, Dragon's Fire, and I have the Fireball. So I have four removal spells, one combat trick with a Hippogriff. And then, yeah, that's kind of what I have right now. I mean, that's not bad. Four removal spells isn't bad. And then I have the equipments as well to go ahead and pump creatures and get in there. So, Horn of Valhalla is looking really good in here, so I'm not going to cut that, especially with the double team cards and the one drops we can get out early on. Would be pretty interesting to have like Kobold Warcaller give like a Monk of the Open Hand haste on like turn two and then get out two monks or something, or I don't know. I wouldn't have enough white mana to get out both of them on the same turn, but it would be interesting if I could find a way to give it haste and then get out um, another one drop, like another war caller on turn two, and then give it haste and pump it. Yeah, this is a hard final cut because I don't want to get rid of my top end because it goes very well with the war caller here and giving creatures haste. Hippogriff is awesome and it's the combat trick. Helps us to fly over the top. Works really well with the Paladin. You can have something fly over the top. Like it could be an Ambergris. Just fly over the top with a nice nice beat heavy creature there. Even the Paladin would be good to fly over the top with. I mean, I could cut a land, but then I would cut down, I think, on the amount of red mana that I have to get out Kobold Warcaller on turn one. And I definitely want as much untapped mana to get those cards out as I can. This is a really tough cut. I like this for the white mana it can get for a white creatures since we're running less white mana and it ramps into the Paladin here. We do have some good three drops to play without needing to use the treasure token to ramp into them. Yeah, and Paladin is good for aggro. This is a 3-1, 2 mana creature that gives you a little bit of uh, card information about the opposing hand. It can make their blockers come in tapped. That's very good. This is a really tough cut. I mean, it could cut a war collar, maybe three is excessive, but even if you have them in multiples in your opening hand, you can just get out one of them on turn two and maybe pump a monk of the open hand on turn two if you have like two of these and one of these in your opening hand. Maybe Young Red Dragon, we can cut down one of those because maybe we only need one of them. The Hippogriff can give other creatures flying and this can't really like... It'll die to like one mana, or it'll die to lots of removal as a as a blocker. It's still just a 3-1 creature, honestly, so. And Young Red Dragons can be stopped by like the 1-1 one, one flyers, like the um, Pilgrim's Eye it is pretty common for players to take in their decks, especially for fixing. And uh, so a 1-1 one, one flyer can trade off with the Young Red Dragons, so maybe I just cut one of these.
Yeah, so other than having these two tapped gates, I mean, I don't have to necessarily play both of them. I mean, it could help out my ability to get out of turn one War Caller to, by cutting one of these and then playing another Mountain. Yeah, I think that's actually more important here. I'll cut one gate, I guess, and then we'll play with 16 lands because we do have some mana sinks with the Rabble Rouser, Liara the Flaming Fist. And then maybe we might want to um, equip one of these equipments to different creatures. We need a mana sink for that as well. So for this particular deck, I think 16 lands is going to be good. More red than white because we have more red cards. We have Young Red Dragon that can get a treasure out for white mana. And we have some double red as far as pumping. Um, we have Rabble Rouser, which will require more red. And Fireball is double red. So... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and see if we can uh, make the dream team, tra uh, dream team Tag Team work in this sort of deck and uh, see how the red-white aggro goes. So I'll go ahead and uh, get the first match started here, and I'll see you guys then. All right, we're heading into our first match here, and as you can notice, my, uh, my avatar icon token thing for my thing is different. I wanted to change it to something I felt more fitting, and it was... Uh, a card from this set, actually, the card art. Um, yeah, we want to play first. We're an aggro deck. We definitely want to go first. And this is an awesome opening hand. We have plenty of white sources. We don't have much red for Rabble Rouser, but getting Kobold Warcaller turn one and then into Rabble Rouser turn two is pretty good. Or we can also do the um, turn two um, Toll Keeper would actually maybe be better because we can get in three damage if they don't have a blocker here turn one. All right, so I think I'd rather just uh, get in my Rabble Rouser then and give it haste so we can activate Double Team here. So we'll get in the Rabble Rouser. They'll block it, obviously, but we just want to go ahead and get Double Team activated so we can get some more gas pumping here. Alright, so the Basilisk is going to be annoying, but I can uh, take it out with the Mephit's Enthusiasm. Let's go and play our white mana, and then... I think what we do is we do Monk of the Open Hand, and then we get out our other Rabble Rouser and we give it haste. Or we can give the Monk haste, actually. Let's do this. Um, we could get the Rabble Rouser out. Maybe Mephis Enthusiasm is better. We just take care of the Basilisk now, and we still pump him up in the open hand of our second spell. And this is Sorcery Speed, so let's just do this now on the Basilisk and get it out of the way here. So we can and then they can block one of them, but not both of them. So that's why I'm attacking with uh, both of my creatures here. If they wanted to trade the Unicorn with Monk of the Open Hand, they could have done that. But uh, understandably, they just blocked the Rabble Rouser there. So it looks like green-white, probably a life gain type thing going on. And we have Hippogriff for the combat trick there, which is quite nice. So I can give something um, indestructible here. Probably don't want to do it with the Toll Keeper because they're just going to block it with the Unicorn. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and do Kobold War Collar on. I could do it on the Rabble Rouser and then keep the mana open in case they do the block and then I can just pump it with my mana. Well, then again, I don't have enough red mana for that. Hmm. Let's just give the Toll Keeper haste. And then we can pump the Monk of the Open Hand with the Combat Trick spell as well by doing this. And we get information about their hand, I think, from this, so... Might have been better to give the Rabble Rouser the uh, Perpetual 
buff there, but having a five uh, power creature here is still not too bad, so. All right, so Inspiring Bard or Celestial Unicorn. Of these, I think I'd rather have the Unicorn come in tapped and then make sure that they're forced to play the Bard instead. Um, yeah, let's go and attack in with everything here and then we can play the Hippogriff and Pump Monk of the Open Hand as well as giving something indestructible here. Patriarch's Humiliation is one way past this combat trick because then it loses all abilities with the Patriarch's Humiliation, which I think would apply to Indestructible, I think. So they could still kill something here even with the Hippogriff combat trick. All right, so I think I'm gonna just go with the Hippogriff here and pump my Monk of the Open Hand and get some value here. Even if they have a combat trick here, um, Monk of the Open Hand is still going to get pumped, so I'm okay with that. Alright, so they're going to do the humiliation on the Monk itself. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, we still have a 5-1 guy here that they're going to have to be forced to trade with, so... That's still not too bad, and we have another Rabble Rouser for some more gas here, so... We do need some more red mana soon, so we can actually use the Rabble Rouser's ability to pump, but... I think we're still in pretty good shape here, and Devoted Paladin is pretty good if the War Caller. Um, because the Hippogriff is not in my hand, I can't give it the Perpetual Haste and have it fly over the top, but... It's still a good play here if I wanted to do that. Um, let's go ahead and do um, this. We're going to go ahead and give our Devoted Paladin haste if we draw a mana like next turn. And then we're going to leave mana open to either pump the, like to pump the Rabble Rouser just in case. So they could have the Rescuer Twinga, the 2-2 Flash creature that could block the Toll Keeper, but if they want to make that trade, I'm okay with it. And any other general combat trick. They could have a Hippogriff to give them Indestructible, which if they want to use it, then I'm okay with it. Okay, so they're going to draw a card here, I guess. And then they get a perpetual plus two plus O on the next spell that they cast, I guess, I think is what that is. Next creature spell, okay. So next creature spell gets the plus two plus O. Let's go with the Hippogriff. And uh, then we can go ahead and fly over the top with the Devoted Paladin next turn if we end up drawing an untapped land. Okay, so the Fireball is a... Uh, bad draw here. We definitely wanted some mana, but let's at least go ahead and do this and get the Rabble Rouser out at the very least, because we're not going to block their Unicorn with one. I think we just want to go ahead and get in over and uh, try and race them here as much as we can. Yeah, I might as well pick one of these, I guess. Yeah, so next turn I can get in there. If I draw an untapped land, I can do the, either the Fireball on the Unicorn, or I can just devote a Paladin in there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Another red mana is going to be excellent here. And because this already has haste, I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. Pump the team, and let's get in there. And then we're going to go ahead and give a Rabble Rouser flying, and then if they want to go ahead and chump block the Paladin. Or we can get in for 8 damage here and put them on a clock as well. But the Sylvan Shepherd gains life, so 
Maybe I go ahead and give them the option to chump block the paladin here so they can't gain life with it. Okay, so they're not going to chump block the paladin, so they're put on a very tight clock here. In fact, I probably should have attacked with the war collar there to try and get in more damage and kill them. I made a mistake, but the fireball will kill them next turn if they don't gain much life here. Yep, I'm going to be like, oops, I goofed. I could have killed you there, and I didn't. <laughs> I should have attacked with the war collar and gone for the kill, so that's okay. I should still be able to kill them this coming turn, but, you know, it is it is what it is. I made a mistake, but I think I'm still going to win, so... We can fly over the top of the Hippogriff and the Paladin, so... They have a feisty Unicorn, but it's okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and... Yeah, they don't have any mana to do anything here, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill their creature. All right, and just like that, I'm not going to go ahead and show them too much here. I can get in for... I can pump a Rabble Rouser. I want to show them as little as I can because it's best of three format. So can I kill them just on board? With the Rabble Rouser and the... Yeah, that wouldn't do it. Um, if I attack of everybody, I can get in for seven, I think. So yeah, I'll just do that. Yep, I think they are dead on board if we attack with everything, so let's just do that. We deal 7 damage, we have 6 in the air, and then they can't block all 3 of our creatures on the ground, so... I could have used the fireball to kill them as well, but... I don't want to show them uh, the rest of my cards here, so that they can not know that I have them, basically, for the best of three formats, so... Sometimes it's a consideration to go ahead and concede a bit earlier in the best of three formats, so that way they don't know what your cards are in your deck, like maybe what you have, like, for rares or for your win conditions. They, You can know what kind of archetype that they are, but maybe they don't know if you have, like, say, a certain removal spell or certain creatures that would be susceptible to removal. So they have some combat tricks. They have a Steadfast Unicorn for pumping. They have Humiliation. So they have some reasons for us to play... Um, what is it? Your Ambush on the Road is halfway decent against removal, but it does slow down aggro. Do we have any targets for Guiding Bolts? Pumped Up Unicorn would be a good target. Trellisara can also get pumped up to be a target, but... Yeah, this isn't really a deck that seems like we're going to have to use um, Guiding Bolt, so we're not going to put that in there. We don't really have... They don't really have any enchantments to target with the Cleric, so we're not going to put that in. Um, Ranger Squadron could be good here because it, it doesn't look like they have any flying creatures to stop it. Warriors of Tiamat's not looking too hot here because they can easily block it with some of the creatures that they have. Maybe the Toll Keeper isn't very good here because they can easily block it with the Unicorn and trade with it. So maybe I'll take that out and... Um, maybe we'll just go ahead and put in a Young Red Dragon just to fly over the top and get in as much damage as we can in the air. Uh, what does Breath Weapon look like against them? I mean, we can kill a number of things, but we'd also kill our own things, so... I think we'll just put in another Red Dragon and leave out the, uh... Yeah, we'll leave out the Toll Keeper there. Yep, I'll submit it. That's good. So we sub out a two-drop white creature for the... Four mana red dragons, so the toll keeper is not looking too great because the one two unicorn blocks it way too well, and we're gonna mull this because we don't have uh even on the draw this is way too risky, so one land is not good enough. Oh god. Uh 
I mean, if we draw another land, we can get the young red dragon treasure out at the very least and do all that, but this is still way too risky. Alright, this we can keep. Um, I guess I'll dump a Plains and the Fiend Lash and we'll just have to hope we can draw some action here. Fiend Lash would be great, but yeah, I think that getting Devoted Paladin Haste at the very least is still halfway decent with the Warcaller, so I'm going to keep it. Excuse me. It happens when you eat healthy things if you see or if you hear me burping or letting out some gas. Uh, sometimes it's just what happens. Okay, so Soldiers of the Watch, another devoted paladin. And, um, I mean, I can offer to trade here and then use the Blessed Hippogriff to give indestructible, so. And we don't really need to give the devoted paladin haste right now, so let's just go and offer to trade here. We get more value out of it if they do it, so let's just go ahead and do it. Preventing double team um, would be a thing there, but we can also could have kept our Kobold Warcaller back to block if they wanted to attack. But uh, if we allow them to attack, then they get double team anyway, and they can get another one out, so maybe it doesn't really matter, so... All right, so it looks like they have uh, some double team going on here for some extra action. That's a very good draw. Very good draw. I can't keep up the indestructible and get it out at the same time, but that's a very good draw at the very least. Um, I don't want to give it haste, so let's just go ahead and get it out here as a blocker. It can... It'd be a very good creature to have out there to at least block one of these soldiers. And this time I'm not going to attack with the Warcaller because now I want to start getting my Paladin's haste. wonder if they have their uh, Patri um, Patriarch's Humiliation out again to try and decide if they want to kill the Warcaller. Let's give one Paladin haste. Sadly, the other one won't get it, but um, we have more war callers in the deck that we could draw into to do that. Okay, so we can... We still have a good blocker in this situation. Ooh, another Rabble Rouser. Okay. Sadly, um, we don't really have a whole lot of mana to work with right now to keep up our combat trick at the same time, but... They did use their humiliation already on the war caller itself, so... Let's just go ahead and get out the other Rebel Rouser, and then maybe um, if we draw an untapped land the next turn, then we can have mana to pump and do the Blessed Hippogriff combat trick. Yeah, so I think they're attacking the game life here. If they have a combat trick, then so be it. But... I think the main reason that they're attacking is just to gain life, so we'll block. Because yeah, there is that two mana combat trick that they could have played that gives, I think, the plus one, plus three in white um, that we have on our sideboard. I think it's like you're ambushed on the road, and that could have killed the Rabble Rouser, but can't really afford to play around it, so... Um, I think we're going to go ahead and attack in here and see we ha we can pump twice and or we can pump once and then do the hippogriff combat trick so and if we attack we at least get double team so we can pump out some more of these Yeah, we do the good old double team, attack in, get an extra copy in our hand, and move on to blockers and see how they block here. Uh, 
Are they going to try and kill one of them? Double block? Okay. So in that case, we can go ahead and pump the Rabble Rouser and uh, give it two power to kill both of those. Yeah, I guess they thought better of it. Could pump twice and kill the Shepherd, but I don't think that we want to do that. Um, let's just go ahead and pump... Well, we can also play some Rabble Rousers here, so... I'll go ahead and do just the indestructible here. The extra one damage on them won't really matter, so let's just do this. And as long as they don't have removal for the Rabble Rouser, we can still play the Hippogriff next turn. Because if you remove the target for you, the adventure card, then you lose the creature side of it, so. Okay, so we force them to use their own combat trick, which is well enough, so I'm okay with that. Get out a Rabble Rouser to block the Soldiers of the Watch. They can get in their own aggro here, but we have enough Rabble Rousers out there to hit them on the backswing that it's going to hurt quite a bit. And if we draw an untapped land, then Devoted Paladin is going to pump them all, so... Okay, so I'm actually, yeah, I'm hoping that they attack in here because then we can attack back and hit them kind of hard here, so... Alright, so that's 9, 12, 15 damage if we don't block anything. But if we get out the Paladin with haste, we have Vigilance and we can block them next turn. So I think I'm not going to block this. They don't have much gas left. And, oh god dang it, that's a tapped land. Well, that sucks. I think that we don't win now because of that. Um... Because they can pump with the Unicorn again next turn, and we don't have removal for it. I mean, we can pump the Rabble Rousers on defense and try and trade with some of their creatures, but that's not going to be enough here. Yeah, let's just concede. Um, we're not going to be able to win, so let's not show them any more cards. I think no matter what we do, we... If we had gotten an untapped land there, we could have at least attacked and tried to force their hand. So that way they can't just attack in on the following turn. So, yeah, the gate there was really bad. Maybe we don't want the untapped lands in our main deck here. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything else that we saw that's going to change what we're doing here, our battle plan. We can still attack in pretty well with the Rabble Rousers into the Soldiers of the Watch and into the Sylvan Shepherd. If we have the ability to pump, then we can go ahead and attack into the Sylvan Shepherd a bit easier. We have some removal for things like the Celestial Unicorns and the Trawasaras of the world. And any cards that have life gain on them. Maybe the Toll Keeper being 3-1 isn't so bad if we can at least trade in with it on an early turn. and Tapping something down, though, doesn't really mean all that much for this particular deck because they don't really have any fat cards that come out really strong out of the gate. They have to pump it up with life gain, like the Unicorn and the Trellisara. So tapping down a Unicorn or a Trellisara isn't that big of a deal because they can still gain life and pump them up and then just use them to attack on the following turn after they get them out. Um, the war callers are still good here for getting any of the these higher mana creatures out with haste, like the Hippogriff, Red Dragon, Devoted Paladin, they're all very good with it. Um, Steadfast Paladin also pretty good with haste, so I think we still want to keep our war callers in here. Breath weapon. We do have targets for it. But it would also kill our own creatures. You know what? Because we can do breath weapon on their turn before they pump with the unicorn, 
maybe that's what we can do. Definitely want to play first. Gosh, what's up with these hands? Like, I have 16 lands and I'm not getting them. So we're gonna have to mull this. This is much better though. And uh, do we want to keep breath weapon or not? The red dragon doesn't get hurt by it. And Horn of Valhalla can help Amargris survive it. And Specializing can also do that as well. Um, yeah, Breath Weapon would be great, but Mephit's Enthusiasm is also removal. It's maybe better because we don't kill our own dudes. Yeah, let's just go in and bottom the Breath Weapon and try and just do our aggro plan here. And we can go ahead and get rid of... We can go ahead and get rid of creatures of the Enthusiasm that are standing in the way or get rid of the Unicorn before it gets pumped up. We have another Patriarch's Humiliation, or maybe it's a, uh, could be a Humiliation. I doubt that they would have kept the one mana Unicorn in their hand if they had it. Make the treasure, so maybe we can ramp up into a nice big fat Horn of Valhalla token generation at some point. So, do we want to do Mephit's Enthusiasm for that? I mean, you could also just get out Young Red Dragon and race them as well, but... If I'm going to kill it with Mephit's Enthusiasm, I would want to do it now before they get double team value. Maybe I have to do that, and then maybe I can go ahead and get uh, Horn of Valhalla on the Young Red Dragon at some point. And just race them to victory here. Yeah, so the excess damage would boost up the young red dragon, so let's go ahead and do that, actually. We prevent them from getting double team. We give the young red dragon a much bigger boost, so you cast your next creature spell. Okay. Yeah, so I don't want to play out Horn of Valhalla until I can get a lot of value off of it, so... So yeah, we can maybe just pump the Young Red Dragon up big enough to where... Oh, there looks like they're kind of mana screwed here because they didn't get a land drop there. But it could mean that they also have removal and they're waiting to use it, so... Yeah, does Horn of Valhalla count as a creature spell? It wouldn't because it's a sorcery. Okay. Because if they have removal, then... I wouldn't want it to be on the creature that has the buff from Mephit's Enthusiasm. I don't know, we can play out the, the Horn of Valhalla, the adventure side of it, and get out tokens. And then maybe force them to use removal on one of the tokens, maybe, and they'll go for it. Let's go ahead and make three of them. Excuse me, there we go. And it's a sorcery, so it's technically not a creature spell, so we get uh, can just get some free value off of this and force them to use removal on something that's smaller, I hope. Or maybe we can force them to tap out, and then we can get in with Ambergris. Okay, so they got rid of a uh, Meteor Golem. Okay, so that's a... So Rabble Rouser could survive a removal spell. Um, if it's the Humiliation, they don't have any creatures out to take advantage of it. Um, yeah, I mean, the Rabble Rouser could survive like a two damage removal spell. Humiliation, I think, is the one main removal spell that we saw from them before. But that's dependent on the creatures being on the field. But it does cause something to lose all of its abilities, so maybe they still do it. 
Um, let's just go ahead and play out the hasty creature and try and get in while they don't have anyone to block it. And then maybe we can specialize it later to make it stronger and hold up the removal better. Alright, so they they concede and I guess they've seen enough and they're... I mean, I hate winning like that. They got kind of mana screwed there. They had only two lands. They had no green, I guess, for their second color, so... I guess the aggro plan was a bit too much for them to be able to slow down at this point, so. Yep, so we would have uh, gotten in for nine, and then if they don't draw an untapped land or some kind of green mana or something like that, maybe, then maybe there just wasn't any chance for them because they had too much of their higher value creatures in their hand and no mana to cast them, so. And then maybe they knew that because they had the Red Dragon and Horn of Valhalla that could get into play, maybe they thought, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to beat that. And Patriarch's Humiliation doesn't do anything if they don't have any creatures on the field. So, yep, makes sense. Kind of, uh, again, sucks to win one of the matches that way. But to be fair, I got kind of uh, mana screwed on some of my opening hands there, and I had the mulligan several times. So, you know, it goes around and comes around. It's just, you know... It happens sometimes, so. To my opponent, I apologize. I'm sorry you couldn't get more lands there, but I uh, hate to win like that. But uh, you know what? You got to take what you can get in Magic the Gathering. This is the way it goes sometimes. The uh, the way the cookie crumbles. So let's go into our second game or second match here with our second opponent. And looks like no pause is necessary in the recording because we get them right away. They are waiting for us, so... Okay, so they're probably going to choose to play first because that's usually the better spot for most decks to play first. A bluish, a blue colored type control deck might want to go ahead and play on the draw so that way they can draw action and then counterspell one of your higher curve creatures. But all right, so even on the draw, this is still pretty decent. We can do planes, monk of the open hand, and then we can um, get out rabble rouser or paladin. In turn two depending what we draw so I could hold off on uh, doing monk of the open hand here and then hope to go ahead and do a turn three play to pump them up but I think that getting them out turn one is maybe just the best thing here and if they eat a removal spell from the opponent then that's okay too I guess so All right, so we're drawing some untapped lands here, which isn't too bad. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, we can't really attack in with the Monk. But we can play the Rabble Rouser to block their Ghoul in case they don't have another creature that they get out next turn. And then turn three here, if we draw a one drop, like another Monk of the Open Hand, or maybe the Kobold War Caller, then we can go ahead and pump up our Monk and maybe attack in next turn. I'd be okay to trade a Monk of the Open Hand with a Ghoul. It looks like a green-black. Um, there's usually some sacrifice synergies or tokens that you can sacrifice in green. And then some reanimation type cards or digging things from the graveyard type cards to get creatures back from the graveyard and knowing yourself sometimes. There's also some pretty strong green black cards in the set as well, so. Okay, so Dragon's Fire would be pretty decent here, but. I think I just want to go and play the gates and get down the Paladin and just fill out my board even more. I could hold up the Dragon's Fire and attack into them with the Rabble Rouser to activate Double Team. And just give myself some more gas so they don't have enough creatures on the board to make the difference. So basically if they block with a Ghoul and sacrifice the Vampire Spawn, I can still kill them with the Dragon's Fire. Alright, yeah, so let's attack here. 
and then we can use Dragon's Fire as needed to deal with them. They're they're tapped out of mana, so they can only do the sacrifice of the Sepulchre Ghoul. Okay. They're going to double block. Alright, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to do this so we can get rid of the Sepulchre Ghoul. So they can sacrifice a vampire spawn, but then they lose two creatures instead of one for my one Rabble Rouser, and I still have double team from it to get the other one out. So if they want to sacrifice it here, they take out my Rabble Rouser, or if they do the sacrifice of the Sepulchre Ghoul on the vampire spawn, they can get rid of my Rabble Rouser, but then they lose both of their creatures. And if they don't, then they just lose the Sepulchre Ghoul and they block my Rabble Rouser without issue. So it's a matter of, do they want to trade both of their creatures to get rid of the Rabble Rouser, or do they want to just take the hit and uh, keep their Vampire spawn? It looks like they're going to trade off their creatures. I am fine with that, because next turn I can pump up Monk of the Open Hand and uh, get out two more creatures here, so I'm totally okay with that, clearing out their board. Okay, so it looks like they're milling. I don't think, at least I don't think, that they had any um, priority there as far as being able to go ahead and cast like a removal spell or something, so... Let's go ahead and get out our other white mana here. This wouldn't affect Gray Slad, so if they're going to play that next turn, we can't have it come into the battlefield tapped because it's exiled right now. So I think we just go ahead and do the Rabble Rouser and then the Paladin. So it looks like they don't have any spells to do anything to us here. So let's do this. Get in there for a monk and then hope we can kind of aggro them out of the game here. We can play the fireball next turn on any big creature that they cast. Five damage takes out most of the creatures in the set. There are some big green creatures that could potentially be an issue. Like there's a um, there's a six mana seven six giant card that gives you life when it comes in the battlefield. That would be a pretty big blocker to deal with us. So yeah, I'm just gonna do the fireball now. Get rid of their blocker and deal extra damage to them in the process. And then we'll gain life from the Steadfast Paladin anyway to deal with that, so... Let's get in there. And if we draw action next turn, then we can go ahead and do two spells to pump up Monk again. And if we don't really draw anything meaningful, we can seek with the gates to get something else into our hand. Menace and Death Touch, and then like another Menace creature from the Altar of Ball. Okay, that's a kind of a scary card. So you can exile a creature you control to get back something from the graveyard. So they have an Owl Bear that's pretty beefy, and an Edder Cap that's a good blocker. Vampire Spawn can gain them some life as well. Um, what do we do here? Um, let's just go ahead and seek with the gate, I think, maybe. I could get this out and just get some extra gas on the field, but if we want to pump up with two spells in one turn, I think we want to maybe seek with the gate. But maybe we attack first and see what they do here, too. See if they block. Okay, so they're going to get rid of the Rabble Rouser. That's fine. We still get in for some more. Let's go ahead and seek a non-land card here. We tap out a lot of our mana here, but we get in some extra stuff. So that's going to be very good next turn. It's true that they do have a blocker for us, but they're attacking with it. And then I guess they're going to try and get something back from the graveyard here. It's 
exile their skeleton. Probably the owl bear would be my guess. Intercap may be a better blocker, but Owlbear draws them a card if they get it out, so makes sense. Oh, Horn of Valhalla is an excellent draw here. I have the double white for it, so I can get out a bunch of creature tokens. Then maybe next turn I can go ahead and play it out as the equipment. Play out the Toll Keeper and then equip it. That would be pretty strong. Um, in black and green, I don't, I'm not aware of any board wipes that they could use to clear the board. Dragon's Breath is the only real board wipe I know about in this particular set of cards, in this format, so I think we're going to go ahead and do this now. So that's two white, and then we can do X for five, I think, yeah. Let's get out five tokens and auto pay. And no attacks. We want to keep our creatures back and then maybe equip Horn of Valhalla onto the Paladin and just gain life and outrace them. Again, in green and black, there aren't any board sweepers that I'm aware of in this particular set of cards. So there are some removal spells or like the, um, the Shambling Ghast is pretty strong against token creatures. You can take out two of them by blocking just one of them basically so but if we go wide enough here then we might just win anyway regardless of what they do with the ultra ball they can do that only once per turn because they have to tap it so they can get one creature back probably the editor cap is what they would go for because it blocks much better against what we have they know that we have the horn of Valhalla out here but I think that we can still do okay just going wide and then forcing them to chump block uh, whatever we equip this to. That's not a bad blocker for them, but Monk of the Open Hand is going to get pumped up here, so it's going to be a bit more difficult for them to block everything that we have. Okay, so I guess they're not going to chump block it, they're going to get Life Gate going. Okay, so I think it makes the most sense. I don't know if there's there's not much in the way of two mana removal for what we have in green and black. With three mana, they would have like the arcane archery combat trick or band together as removal, but they only have two mana out. So we're just going to play the horn first. And then I think we equip it to the Paladin and just gain life here. And then we can play the... Let's play this and see what they have in their hand. And we still pump the Monk. And we can slow down their blocking. Alright, Dread the Norm, you are going to be tapped. I definitely want the Dread the Norm to come out tapped. Chain Devil at the very least. We can trade with it pretty effectively so and they have to chump block the paladin so let's just attack with everything never mind I thought that was attacking with everything but apparently not I did want to attack with everything there just for the record um, but this attack would probably make sense to the opponent as well because it keeps the steadfast paladin much stronger here for the life gain aspect so they need like a Grim Bounty off the top of their library here and I think they have a chance or some other black removal spell. If they don't have removal for the Paladin then they probably don't win here even with their Altar of Ball getting them creatures. They'd probably have to play out the Chain Devil and try and get rid of some of our creatures here or something. Toll Keeper is technically a non-token creature, so we can sacrifice that instead of the Paladin. Okay, so they're going to try and draw cards here, I think, if I'm assuming. 
and see if they can draw removal off the top of their deck here. Removal, I think, is what they're going to need, and we have enough life gain where we can just take this. With Steadfast Paladin, we can take four damage, and it's not even a problem, so... In fact, we can even take six damage, and it's not a problem, so... Let's play out Giant Fire Beetles, make sure our Paladin's pumped up even more, and now we're going to attack in. So let's see... Yeah, plus two, plus two. I'm not sure why that's untapped when they just attack with it. And untap it. Okay. So they timed it right to where they could untap it. That makes sense. Now we're going to attack in with everything. That's eight damage there. And then they're going to have to chump that and they can block the Toll Keeper with the owl bear. I'm betting. But we're just going to pump in as much damage here as we can, and then next turn we can try and get in with our Menace creature that has to be double blocked. And we can still sacrifice the Giant Fire Beetles if they play like a Chain Devil next turn, so this is okay. We could also go ahead and put the Horn of Valhalla on the Giant Fire Beetles as well. Because the Fire Beetle has Menace, so they'd have to double block it. Which is probably worth it for us, so... We have enough life here now to be able to race them. We have five tokens that can deal out five damage, so... We can sacrifice the Steadfast Paladin. Okay, so they'll probably sack that to the Chain Devil here. Let's say they probably sack that to the Chain Devil, then they activate Ultra Ball to get uh, something else out into the battlefield here, like the Vampire Spawn, gain some life. They have enough mana, do they? No, they don't. They need one more mana to still play the Dread the Norm Dragon here. They're probably deciding what creature they want to get back with Ultra Ball. But I would play the Chain Devil here if I were them, sacrifice Circle of the Land Druid, then do Ultra Ball to get like Vampire Spawn back and gain some life to try and outlast me. So I'm going to sacrifice that because the Fire Beetles having Menace here I think is a bit more important. So if we force them to double block to kill it. And since it deals 8 damage still, we can still get in there for lethal if they choose not to block it. Even with the Vampire Spawn. Okay, so I'm gonna do the, um... I'm gonna do the Kobold Warcaller now, I guess. Just to pump up the Fire Beetles. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference here, but let's attack with everything. It has Menace, so we can get another one out with Double Team. We can sack the War Collar to another Chain Devil. I definitely want to kill the Owl Bear first. Play the other Fire Beetles here. And we don't want to re equip the Horn of Valhalla because then otherwise the Fire Beetles will die. And I don't think that there's any card that can save them now. Yep, that's, uh, that's the end of that. Maybe I didn't need to show the War Caller there, but just in case that they had something, I figured I might as well do that. Just to have another creature out there to sacrifice to the Chain Devil. In case they play Chain Devil again, so... Okay, so we went up against green-black sort of reanimation with Ultra Ball. Normally this would be a tough matchup for us, but if we can curve out like we did there and get out lots of early plays, we can kind of keep them on the back foot, use removal to get rid of like Ettercap and Owlbear. The problem with removal is that they, we just get creatures to the graveyard and they can get it back with the Ultra Ball. And so they can just keep on coming back for more with uh, that kind of card. 
band together is strong removal that they have that we know they have they milled it out circle with Wayne Druid gets them back some uh, gets a land for them if they mill something out of there And then Dreadland Norm is a pretty strong target that doesn't die to the Fireball. But we still have plenty of targets for the Fireball, though. Most of what we saw from them dies to the Fireball. Edder Cap is a good target for it to clear a path. Schoolport Merchant's another good target. Owlbear, Vampire Spawn is even decent. Is Ranger Squadron looking good here? Or Warriors of Tiamat? Um, Warriors of Tiamat can get past the Skullport Merchant with his four power. Sepulcher Ghoul can still trade with it though. And some of these things in exile, I think. Chain Devils and stuff. Okay, well. I don't think there's anything that we want to sideboard into. Dawnbringer Cleric doesn't deal with the artifact. Guiding Bolt can be decent here for the Owl Bear and the Dread the Norm. You know, let's take out the Tolk. Not the Don't Bring a Cleric. I want the Guiding Bolt here. All right. Yeah, I think I got that submitted in time. I want to trade out the Guiding Bolt in there because we do have a couple of juicy targets for it. We have the Owlbear, we have the Dread the Norm, and if they pump up a creature, then certainly we could use it on a creature like that too. We're going to mold this. This is a keep. We'll drop a red mana here. Or drop a white mana, sorry. Jesus, I'm just... I don't know if I'm... I don't know if I'm like dyslexic or what, but sometimes I just blurt out the totally wrong and incorrect thing. Um, like I did in the first match, um, or not the first match, but the first draft video I did, where I talked about, oh, 16 lands, but I meant 15, and yeah, so sometimes I blurt out the wrong thing, and it happens, so um, I think we're going to do Liara of the Flaming Fist, and then maybe we can give double team eventually to the Red Dragon here. They could have removal for Liara, but if it's banned together then band together can't kill it just yet so we can at least attack in with it so red is removal colors but they're probably splashing something that's red maybe there's the i don't know there might be like a dragon card that they're splashing in here maybe there's like a strong i mean there are some strong red rares there's also some strong, maybe there's like an enchantment spell from red that they have in the deck that's strong for them. So we can give the Rabble Rouser haste and get the double team activation going, so that's probably what I'm going to do. Like, I don't know if they're going to kill my War Caller in response, or... Liara in response to anything, but let's play it out anyway because we have to aggro them out of here. At least we activate double team with the Rebel Rouser. So they're probably gonna have a turn four play here if I'm if I know this deck, they have like the chain devil. So do I want to get rid of the War Collar? I think I do. It's definitely the weakest card that we have. Of, all right, and we get another one anyway, so that's okay. That's that's fine. That is great. Okay. I don't have enough red mana to do all three of these uh, for the token thing. I could use the token for playing one of them, but that would kind of defeat the purpose. So. Um. Yeah, I'm not able to give that haste, so I'm just going to do the, maybe the token thing for that. Um, yeah, let's just generate the token in case we get Horn of Valhalla that will come in handy, and then we're going to play out the Rebel Rouser. And then we pump up the Rebel Rouser with the other one, so 
Um, we could play out the War Caller, but I think we're going to save the treasure because the Horn of Valhalla will get much better with the treasure pumping up the casting of the adventure side. Okay, so they're going to get back a creature card. Dread the Norm. Okay. We can attack into the Dread the Norm because we can pump the Rabble Rousers and then play Mephit's Enthusiasm to kill it. So that's probably what I'm going to have to do here. And when I play the Mephit's Enthusiasm, I'm just going to have to play it post-combat at sorcery speed, so that's still going to be able to kill the Dread the Norm. Guiding Bolt would have been able to kill it too, but... And if they don't block here, I can just go ahead and uh, pump up the Rabble Rousers and get in a lot of damage here and bring them close to lethal. Because if I pump twice, it pumps up both the ra I can actually kill them here if they're not careful. So let's pump up once with the Rabble Rousing. And then let's go ahead and get into the damage here. I pumped up to deal extra damage to them to their face, and then Mephit's Enthusiasm will finish that off and give an extra plus one plus O oh to the young red dragon next turn if I want it. Well, actually, let's do it with the War Caller here, because at the very least, I'm going to be able to get in for lethal maybe on next turn, depending. So just get him in right now and force them to have something on defense. Young Red Dragon would be much better to give the plus 1 plus 0 to, but 3 1 in the air might still be able to kill them, whereas this puts more pressure on them with a 2 1 attacker instead of 1 1. Because they have only 6 life left, the Ara plus Kobold War Collar is, steel, is um, still for damage. Oh, yeah, because it's in the graveyard. The Rabble Rouser being in the graveyard would still pump the other one. Okay, that's actually good to know. I, I keep forgetting that part. I can also give double team to my War Caller here. Um, this already has haste, so I can attack in with the War Caller and call it a... You know, I can attack in with everything, I think, and call it a day. I can play this and I can still pump the uh, Rabble Rouser or give uh, War Caller or Ambergris double team. With Liara. So I can only activate that once, but Ambergris is a good target for double team here, so I think we play this and then we can use the treasure for double team activation. Let's do this ability for Ambergris. Play that. They can kill Ambergris, but if they do, then that's that's just more investment that they're putting into killing it. The Rabble Rouser is still going to get pumped here, so still going to be a good bit of damage there, so. So I forced them to do that, and now we're going to attack it. Let's see what they do here. They can kill Liara, but that doesn't solve their problem next turn of uh, what they have to deal with, and they know that the red dragon can kill them over the top. So let's see what happens here. I mean, they have to block here. It's lethal. They have no mana for a combat trick or removal, so they have to do something here. It's a matter of what they decide to block, and they go after the... Like, they'll, they'll drop to one if they block Liara, but that might be what they have to do so we don't get pumped on the next turn. Even though it leaves them more vulnerable, maybe they'll draw, like, a vampire spawn to get them life, which might be enough. Um... Young Red Dragon can still fly over the top and kill them. 
And we can obviously still draw some gas here to try and maybe use a removal spell. Okay, so we can still pump the Rabble Rouser with this, so... Let's attack in first. Maybe just the Rabble Rouser is what we want to do. See if we can trade with them and then do the Young Red Dragon for the win. Do they want to trade a creature for it at one health? Well, they kind of have to block here, obviously, because they're at one health, but which creature do they want to go with? Do they have a combat trick here? Okay, so I'll at least force them to do something. So let's see, it's four mana for the dragon. We can pump once. That's not going to be enough to kill anything here, so... Okay, so since they are double blocking, um, what do we want to do here? So do we want to pump up and kill that or not? We can pump up three times and kill it. The way is the young red dragon, but we can at least kill it. I think we just go ahead and kill the moon druid here. And if they use removal on the rabble rouser, then it frees up the red dragon here. So let's go ahead and do this. Force them to go ahead and trade off there. Again, if they have a combat trick, that's fine. Because then that means that the young red dragon is just going to get in there and do its thing. Um, can the red dragon get haste? That is the question. Because it is an exile, it's not in my hand. Yeah, choose a creature card in your hand, so I can't give the red dragon haste. Alright, so we're definitely going to have to fly over the top to win here. Um, no blocks. Um, does it count in my hand? Let's check. Yep, it doesn't count. Okay. So yeah, if they have removal for the Young Red Dragon, they win. If they don't, then we win. So, that's just good and uh, do what we gotta do here. If they have removal for it, then so be it. We can go to the next game if that's the case. I'll keep the war color um, here just in case. Yep, so that's... Sucks to see. They had the Edder cap there, so we might not win this unless we get some miracle of haste here. They probably keep back their blockers because the war color threatens with haste. I forget if we have the other young red dragon in the main deck. I think that we do. I don't think that we sideboarded any of them out. I think we just sideboarded the Toll Keeper out. Okay, so they have lethal next turn because of that, and they get the treasure. The War Caller is my only way to win. I think I have to grab like a Hippogriff or a young red dragon to Alright, so that's gonna... Yeah, Edder Cap with Reach, I think, wins it for them. Yeah, the Devoted Paladin's not gonna be enough here, because it doesn't have Trample. I guess technically Fiend Blash could have also won me the game by dealing damage to a player. I mean... I could still hope to draw Fiend Lash. Because it can win me the game here. If, like, the Paladin dies, then it can kill them to the face. Yeah, I guess... I guess we'll do this because we have a Fiend Lash that can still draw. 
that can technically win us the game, so. Let's go ahead and put out the Paladin here and attack in and force them to trade off a creature for it, at the very least. And it has Vigilance, so... If they trade the Edder Cap here, then it can draw... Alright, so since they're trading with the Edder Cap and not the Skullport Merchants, that means that we can get a Hippogriff or a Young Red Dragon in for the win next turn, if we draw it off the top. Without their reach creature, they... yeah. They can still trade with the devoted paladin, I guess. So... Young Red Dragon or Hippogriff or Bust. So that's kind of what we need right now. Another devoted paladin could maybe stabilize it for us, but we, we're at such little health here, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. With the Dread the Norm that they can play, we have to have a flying creature here to win. I don't know why they wouldn't play the Dread the Norm here, because it can block everything that we have. I mean, green doesn't usually have any flying creatures. It usually has cards that can deal with flying creatures, like um, the Edder Cap. Or line up the shot or choose your weapon can all deal with flying creatures, but they don't usually have any flying creatures themselves, so. They also have some reach creatures like the Edder Cap, and then there's like a two mana white green creature in this set that's like an archer type character that has reach and first strike that could block them too. Alright, so anything that deals with flying creatures is something we don't want to have them get back, so we definitely want it to be this pile. That pile does not deal with flying creatures, and that's the only way we can win right now. Give a flying creature haste and get in there for the win. The norms don't have reach. This doesn't have reach, so... Let's block there, take out their druid, and hope we draw a flying creature here. If they have arcane archery, I think that they kill us. Or actually, no, they'd come up one damage short, I think. Arcane archery would give them nine power for five damage with trample, and then one more damage from the horde robber, so... If they have arcane archery, they would have to have attacked with the skullport merchant to kill us. So, all right, so flying creature or bust. That's not going to be good enough. So, we're going to do a good game. We're going to concede this one since we can't win and go back to the side board here. Okay, so Toll Keeper can, like, it has some good targets to tap down in their hand. That's in their hand, like the, the Dread of the Norms, the Edder Cap. The Moon Druid is a decent target for that, too. Um, I don't know if it's good enough, though. Dread the Norms. Are good to tap down perpetually basically with that ability. Um, I guess I didn't have the second young red dragon in here so I definitely want to be able to fly over the top and get the win. Guiding Bolt is still good here for the Dread the Norms, the Owlbear. Circle of the Moon Druid can technically be targeted with it on its when it's their turn. What card do I want to get rid of for the other red dragon here. Uh, maybe one, maybe three kobold war collars isn't really necessary here. I mean, it's nice to give our flyers haste, but we only really need one of them out on the field to be able to do that. Maybe Ambergris isn't really good for this matchup here because we don't really have the ability to 
we don't really have the capability to specialize reliably, so maybe two of them isn't really necessary. Plus we have Cobalt War Color to give creatures haste, so let's get rid of uh, the second copy of Ambergris there. It's a really strong card, but it's we're not going to be discarding too many tards. It's usually going to be a 3-mana, three 3-2 three, haste creature. It can maybe sometimes specialize into growing a bit bigger, so... Yeah, so I think we want to just try and fly over the top and uh, get the job done with our flyers. And Breath Weapon, I don't think it's good enough to justify here, so... We're going to kill more of our creatures than theirs, I think, in this matchup. Or more of our creatures than theirs, yeah. Uh, we definitely want to go first. And this is a very good looking hand. The Battle Cry Goblin making its first appearance for us here, so. And then we have some removal. We can go Battle Cry Goblin into a Steadfast Paladin, maybe. And then, if we keep drawing lands, then at the very least we can use the flood of lands to power up the Horn of Alhalla, getting tokens and. Then maybe we can go ahead and get Stadfast Paladin, a bunch of uh, lifelink, life gain going there, so. Stadfast Paladin obviously is uh, quite good when it comes to equipments, the powering it up so it gets you more life gain with that. Guiding Bolt is going to be nice for later, so it's not necessarily bad. Let's do the Paladin first. If, uh, if they have removal for anything, I'd rather have them do it on the Paladin instead of the Battlecry Goblins, so... Yeah, so I guess we can't really attack into that, so I think we do... But we can do Mephit's Enthusiasm to give Battlecry Goblin, or maybe even something else, a nice big plus X plus O boost, so... Let's do this, and then let's do Mephit's Enthusiasm to get this thing out of the way. They get an extra land out of it, but I don't care. I'd rather do it on a creature to where I can pump up the next creature that I cast here. And then I have Guiding Bolt for any... Like, if they have a Lurking Roper in here, I can use it on that. I can also save Guiding Bolt for their... Druid. I can also just go ahead and do Horn of Valhalla, but maybe what I do is I just pass the turn and then wait to see what they do next turn to see if what I want a Guiding Bolt, since I can't really attack into them right now. Yeah, we don't really have any effective attacks, even if I took out the, or if I played the Battle Cry Goblin and want to get as much value out of the Horn of Ahawa as I can. So, do I want to do this or not? I could also just go ahead and trade the Steadfast Paladin and then play Guiding Bolt against whatever creature that they play next, so. Hate to do it when I have Horn of Ahawa in my hand, but there's some other good targets for Horn of Valhalla, so that's probably best. Okay, so Vampire Spawn isn't a good target for it, so I think we can just play Battle Cry Goblin, then pass, and see what they play this next turn. So we can play Guiding Bolt at instant speed if they play out a nice big creature like Cap or something. They probably hold back the Vampire Spawn to block the Battle Cry Goblins, so yeah, that's what I thought they would probably do. Um, we can give we can give Horn of Valhalla one more turn, and then we can get it out and get all the creature tokens out, and then get in with Battle Cry Goblin and Pack Tactics. Um, I don't think we want to attack in here. 
So we'll just wait one more turn and then we'll Guiding Bolt the next big fat creature that they play out. Cap wouldn't be targeted by it, but Dread Lenorm could be, or Owlbear. Okay. So I guess that's technically a Guiding Bolt target if they want to do that. Like, if they want to go ahead and play the Battle Cry Goblin, then I can just Guiding Bolt it. Alright, so I guess the perpetual buff doesn't apply when they get control of it, so... okay. So I guess I can specialize Guiding Bolt if I really want to, to make them big enough. But they can do the plus one plus O oh with the treasure token if I do that. So let's go and play this out. Maybe we just play Horn of Valhalla now and then we wait for the opportunity to get the right creature equipped to it. Probably what we can do here. And then that would be one, so that'd be two. X can be five. So let's do one, two, three, four, five. Auto pay. The next turn we can maybe get Ambergris out and maybe seek a non land with the gate. Thankfully, if they attack in here, they can't really pump up the goblin because they don't have red mana to do that, but I think they mainly took it away from me so that way they would make sure they don't just have like a 5-2 creature on the field, so. See, if they attack in here with everything, they could have like a Dread the Norm to block afterwards, so I don't think I would want to double block with the tokens, because the Horn of Valhalla is much better the more tokens that I have, so. I guess they'll pump once for pack tactics, I'm assuming, so they can get a goblin token. I'm not going to block because I want Horn of Valhalla to be as powerful as it can be. Maybe they have Dread the Norm combat trick for the two plus one plus one counters. That's what I'm betting that they might have. Band together, they wouldn't use that on any creature tokens here, so. In fact, I don't know if there's any removal that they would use on just these one one tokens unless they wanted to make the Horn of Valhalla weaker. I equip it. Yep, they will be dread the norm. So now they have a nice fat four or five blocking creature here. And there's the altar of ball. Well, the good thing about holding Guiding Bolt in my hand is that um, I can now use it on the Vampire Spawn and get through there with a hasty Ambergris. But do I have enough mana for that? So it's 6 mana, 2 mana, then 3 mana equip. Hmm. I mean, I can save Guiding Bolt for the Dread Lenorm, though. That's probably better and force them to chump block with the vampire spawn if they want to prevent the damage. Because this will be 5 mana, and then this is 3 mana, so I have 8 lands, which is exactly enough, I think, to play both of these. So let's do this. Do haste, we'll play this out, and then we'll equip it to Ambergris. Attack with everything. Um, I think we're going to keep the Guiding Bolt for their Dread the Norm. Force them to be on a clock. And I guess in the best of three matches, I can't remember if it's like... 
I think in best of three format, you have this timer down here for your turns and when you have uh, priority. So if you spend forever thinking about things, then you can't just take forever on your decisions. So, so if they play Dread Norm, then we Guiding Bolt that, and then if we draw a land next turn, we can discard it, draw two cards. Oh, never mind. They were able to get in for the win. That's unfortunate. Well, okay. It happens. I thought that they wouldn't have enough power out there, but I guess with the extra token and then getting out this thing, then yeah, they were able to beat me on that one, so. I thought they wouldn't be able to attack with everything and kill me there, but I should have maybe left back a token for a chump blocker if I thought that would happen, so. Hey, it happens. You make mistakes, and uh, two wins still gets us a thousand gems here, so. 250 gems is still enough to get me enough gems to do another sort of draft video, so. Would have been nice to get the three wins. We probably could have been able to win that there if we had a chump blocker back to prevent them from going in for lethal, but I was under the impression they would try and get the Dread the Norm out and uh, try and do all that, so. Yep, Guiding Bolt would have been good if they played the Dread the Norm, but they went in and they were able to get everything in there for the win. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes in Magic. So they make a good play and you just have to tip your cap to them. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the recording here. Oh, never mind. Um, I was going to pause the recording and then my opponent showed up uh, to go ahead and play me. So let's see what we're up against this time. Yeah, that Circle of the Land Druid did uh, really stifle my aggro in there, so that's a pretty good card against our kind of deck. And we see Fiendlash making an appearance for the first time, so this looks like a pretty good hand. Turn 2 Toll Keeper, and then maybe you can do turn, or turn 2 Flaming Fist maybe. Uh, let's do red, so that way we don't have uh, priority held by Patriarch's Humiliation when we can't use it yet, really, so. And then, I guess Tollkeeper gives us hand information, so let's see what we have, or what we're dealing with here with our deck. So you have some non-creature spells here. They have enough lands where it doesn't really matter too much. I can do the Swamp, actually, because then they can't do the Adventure with Grey Slad next turn, so I'll just do that. Yeah, if the Swamp comes into play tapped, then they can't do the Adventure side of Grey Slad next turn. So that'll slow them down with that. Okay, so we're not drawing... Alright, so we did draw a land, I guess, there, and... So we have to decide, do we want to get in there or not? I think we do. Let's get in there with Ambergris because we have another copy, so we might as well. And get in for six. Decline because we have lots of good action in our hands, so. Patriarch's Humiliation deals with the Grey Slad as well. Deals with Grey Slad, it would deal with like a 4-2 creature. No, it wouldn't. But... Okay, so we can still play out another Ambergris. I mean, that's going to be good. We play out Ambergris, then the turn after we can play out Liara. And Ambergris gets buffed because we still have a Ambergris in the graveyard, so... I don't think there's any one mana red rem removal in this set, so we'll just go... No, I don't want to. I don't want to discard my hand. Thank you for asking, but uh, no game. I don't want to discard my hand yet. So, if they have removal for Ambergris, then it is what it is. We still have some more action to play out. Fiend Lash can still get them pretty good as well. Fiend Lash on the Toll Keeper would be still pretty strong. Looks like they're going to try and slow down the aggro here. Okay, so we can do Monk and then Liara. That sounds pretty good. We can also get a treasure with Young Red Dragon and play that out next turn to try and kill them.
Yeah, Young Red Dragon flying over the top might be better against Red Black. I mean, Red Black does have some flying creatures that has removal, but if they have removal, Young Red Dragon would die either way, no matter what card it is, so... Let's do the long-term play here. We could do Flame Lash and flip it next turn, but... Let's just go ahead and do this. Pump up the Monk of the Open Hand. And I guess technically we have Humiliation that we can play with one mana and the treasure, so... If there's something that I absolutely want to get rid of, then I can do it this turn. But I probably just want to save the treasure for the Red Dragon to play. That is a good thing, the Humiliation, but if I draw an untapped land, I can still play it. Alright, so... Cobalt War Collar. So did I pump up the Monk again? Probably not. I think I just play Young Red Dragon and then put them on the clock for next turn. I mean, we could still Patriarch's Humiliation too and get in for the win that way. Maybe that's better. And play War Caller, then Humiliation, and then maybe Flaming Fist if they have something in, that they can play to counter what we're doing. Let's go ahead and do that then. And then a little Patriarch's Humiliation, the Fire Beetles here, and see if we can just get in for the win. Alright. We were able to curve out pretty nicely there and uh, just get in the action and really slow down what their whatever their plan was, which is red-black. Looks like red-black aggro probably. Earth Cult Elemental is an interesting choice. I guess it might be red-black sacrifice aggro. Kind of similar to my uh, deck that I played with my first Baldur's Gate draft in my last video. They might be playing like a red-black aggro type deck. Maybe milling a couple things and getting something back from the graveyard with like a uh, like summon undead can get things back from the graveyard so they can maybe try and mill some stuff and get back like an earth cult elemental to play. And they have some removal in there so You're ambushed on the road, looking decent, but I think that the plan usually is just to put out more creatures than they can remove. Let's see, Ranger Squadron survives the Dragon's Fire. We didn't see any targets for Guiding Bolt other than the... We have Earth Cult Elemental, but they aren't going to be playing that early. And then I think they have Gray Slad. That's a target for it, but it's not an ideal target for Guiding Bolt. So we didn't see any like game-changing type cards that have four power for Guiding Bolt, so I don't think I'm going to bring that in just yet. Cloak of the Bat might look okay because they don't really have any flyers that we could see to block our flying creatures. Tollkeeper is still looking good because it trades off with their like three drops, excuse me, that they have, and we get hand information, so. Warriors of Tiamat gets blocked by a number of things that they have, it appears, like two twos and things like that. Yeah, I think we're just going to run it back here. We're going to go back out there and go to halftime with the same game plan, honestly. We we could uh, bring in the your Ambush on the Road to deal with their removal, but there aren't any cards that I think are so important that I want to, re to prevent removal to them. All right, so this is a risky hand. Um, we are on the draw, though, so we could draw some white mana here. We could draw a young red dragon for a treasure as well. Um, um, I think I'll risk it and just keep the cards in my hand. I might have to discard something nice anyway if I mulligan this. At the very least, we can just keep on giving 
haste to the creatures in our hand with the war color for when we do get the white mana or the treasure from young red dragon and there is a uh, lawnmower that's uh, making noise outside so that's the noise that you're hearing there's a turn turn three ambergris isn't too bad but we can't give it haste from the war color so let's just go ahead and uh I guess that's a first strike creature. And they can specialize from the graveyard. So this is a pretty good creature. Red, black. So what can they do with black here? All right, so for this, it gives them haste out of the graveyard, which is pretty strong. But it can't block if they do that one, I guess. And then for black... They can draw cards and lose some life if they sacrifice a creature. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and just to give, as the lawnmower is playing in the background here, let's go ahead and give uh, Liara some haste here since it's the creature I could play the soonest. Ambergris already has haste, so I don't need to give her haste. I'll let them get in for the two damage here. It's not too bad. Monk of the Open Hand is a pretty bad draw, admittedly, but we can at least trade with the Kobold Warcaller if we... or not the, uh... Kobold Warcaller can trade with the Grey Slot if we really want to. I don't know if we want to trade with Ambergris. I mean, we can. We can also specialize it, but that doesn't really do us much good because we... just discard our hand, basically, if we do that, I think. Um, let's just go ahead and do this. We'll do the... I don't know. Maybe we can block with the War Caller on the Grey Slot if they don't have Menace. And then we can go ahead and give a Devoted Paladin Haste. So let's go ahead and do this. Play it out so we have it on the field. Um, no attacks. And then if they want to trade with the War Caller, I'm more than happy to do that. I can block with the War Caller on the Grey Slot, then give a creature haste and tap it. Alright, so it looks like what they're doing. So I want to initiate the block first, and then I will tap it to give a Devoted Paladin haste. Even if they kill the War Caller here and save the Grey Slot, I still get the haste value out of the War Caller, so I'm not really too worried if they want to use a combat trick here on this. Alright, well, we get uh, another War Caller out here, so I could discard Liara or something in white to specialize this. Other creatures you control. And then we can deal damage to them based on how many things we've discarded. I mean, drawing a new hand here is also not bad. You know what, maybe we just go ahead and specialize it and just draw a new hand here. Because we don't have lands to play much of anything anyway. Let's discard Liara. That's a red card, technically, so... And let's attack. Take action, we'll discard our hand. Draw a bunch of cards, or some cards, and deal damage to them. And we'll play out Monk of the Open Hand and at least do something here. So that's not necessarily an ideal turn for us, but we couldn't play most of the stuff in our hand anyway, so let's at least do something with what we've got. So if we get like a removal spell for a gray slot, then we can get in there for some more damage. So 
If we just let Carlax keep attacking here and we don't block them and kill them, then they can't really specialize from the graveyard and do that, so... And then we can get in there with a young red dragon. We can ask, we can see if they're willing to trade the Grace Lad for the Monk of the Open Hand and then play Red Dragon. So we can see if we can win the race here. If they have another combat trick to do stuff with the Grace Lad, then hey, it is what it is. Let's see if they choose the block, and then we can play the Young Red Dragon after that, depending, so... Let's go ahead and put them on a three-turn clock. They could have removal, but if they do, then there's not much we can do about it, no matter what, so... What card did they discard? They discarded a Dragonborn Immolator, so I think they're trying to draw removal. I'm assuming, yeah, so they tried to draw removal or maybe some kind of uh, creature that can block our red dragon here, so... Okay, so we can sacrifice the Barbarian for two red mana, I guess. I wonder what the last card in their hand is. It's something that they can probably play if they're thinking about it. But it could also be a big creature that they're looking to ramp into or something. So let's see. We discarded the fireball, so we can't use that to get rid of their dragon. Um, and if we attack in, Gray Slad just blocks anything that we throw at it, so... Any reason to hold up a land here? Well, we can make him think that we have something with it. So if Ambergris attacks, we can get rid of the Gray Slad. And they don't really have much in their graveyard right now, but... I mean, I could bluff with attacking here and make them think I have a combat trick. But they'd probably still block anyway, because they know that even if I have a combat trick, their dragon can still kill my one toughness dragon, so I don't think we can really do that. It's a matter of, do I want to trade the Grey Slod with my Ambergris? Um, I, don't, I don't think we attack here. I think we just wait and keep back their creatures as much as we can, so... And if they decide to specialize Karlak, then they're going to have first strike and be 4-4, but... You know, it is what it is. We discarded the fireball and that was the choice we made, so... So yeah, I guess they're pondering if they want to specialize the Karlak and then if they want to attack with everything. If they attack with the dragon, I can hit them for three with my own dragon on the backswing, so... So I think that um, what they were looking at there is that um, previously in the previous balance, the Young Red Dragon couldn't block in the earlier 
sort of renditions of this format. I think it was like a 3-2 creature that couldn't block, and now it's a 3-1 flyer that can block. Basically, so it's, um... Maybe they're just double-checking if it could still block or not. Um, even if I kill the Karlak, they can still special... Like, I guess they already specialized it. So I'd have to triple block to be able to kill it. Um... I think I'll do it. If they have a trick here, it is what it is. Yeah, I forgot the first strike would kill those two creatures, so... That was actually my mistake. I should have just chomped with the Monk of the Open Hand. I forgot that, um... Yeah, I forgot that my... Uh, Ambergris there had only three toughness there, so it was actually my mistake, so. They had the upper hand anyway, and they were probably going to win no matter what, but that was a mistake I made. I forgot that the Ambergris had only three toughness, and their first strike would end up, uh, reaching my dragon, so, with that one point of damage, so. Um, so they have... Good targets for Guiding Bolt now that we know what they have, so let's put that in there. They have the Flying Dragon, they have Karlak when it specializes, they have the Gray Slad. Dragonborn Immolator could also be a target if they pump it up. This could also make something a target for the Guiding Bolt, so it's a, looking like a good sideboard option for us. Um, anything else? They don't have any enchantments for the Cleric to deal with, so... Yeah, no enchantments or anything like that. They have just this tiefling barbarian there. If we had the Mace of Disruption, then that would be good against Karlax since it would give you protection from it, but we don't have a Mace of Disruption on the sideboard for the... I guess technically it would be against demons and devils. I don't think it affects tieflings for the Mace of Disruption, so I guess maybe that wouldn't help us here. Um... Ranger Squadron gets locked up pretty well by their Shardolin Dragon there, so that's not really a good option for us, and they have a bit too much going on, maybe with, uh, yeah. Um, do we want the Young Red Dragon in there too? I think maybe we do. Maybe we get rid of one War Caller, bring in... Young Red Dragon. What about Breath Weapon? They have plenty of targets for us to hit with it, I think. They have Barbarian, Gray Slad. This one is not specialized. Huh. You have some good targets for the Humili or the Provocation as well. Um, let's take out the Toll Keeper again. And let's uh, do this. Maybe they won't draw the dragon this time and I'll have an opportunity to get in over the top of the young red dragons and the hippogriff, so. And maybe I won't get so, like, mana screwed this time with my colors, so. Alright, well, for our final game here in this uh, best of three format that we're doing, this is a really good hand to go out with, so I'm going to keep that. War Caller turn 1 gives the Rabble Rouser or Liara haste for turn 2. Then after that we can do, uh, hum not Humiliation, but um, maybe turn 3, one of these other two cards, and then haste on the Paladin as well, so... So even if we don't draw another land here, we're still in decent shape with the haste that we're getting, so... Um, I think I'm going to give the Rapple Rouser the haste for now, since it has double team, and we just get another one out here right away, or soon, so. Attack in, activate double team, and even if they kill one of the Rapple Rousers, then it will just go into my graveyard and Liara will pump up the other one, so. 
Horde Robber is a good blocker for our Rabble Rousers, but Patriarch's Humiliation could kill it too if we want to just try and get in there, but... Not sure if that would be wise. Um, mainly just due to the fact that uh, I think we have bigger targets to fry with the humiliation, with the Patriarch's humiliation here. So I could give Liara haste and then attack in with a rabble rouser and Liara. But I think that giving the Rebel Rouser haste might actually be better. Let's do this. Let's pay the two red mana for this. We have the Humiliation up in case we need it. And we can at least deal one damage to them here. So if we want to kill something with Humiliation, that will do a lot of work for us to get in on our next turn. If we draw an untapped land, I'm okay with doing this for now, and then if they want to bring out something big for this, then we can kill it with a Humiliation. That's a pretty good target. Yeah, so we'll just sacrifice the War Caller here. We can still kill this with the Humiliation, so let's take that out. Battle Cry Goblin. Okay. So it's whatever. What do we want to do here? Um, I think we just get the Liara out, pump both of the Rabble Rousers, and then hope we can draw a land next turn. And if not, we can just keep on getting out like creatures, like the Battle Cry Goblin, Young Red Dragon, getting a treasure token would allow us to get out both Liara and Battlecry Goblin next turn, but we don't put out as much damage this turn that way, so let's just do this. Well, they don't have any blockers, let's do it. And then if we draw an untapped land, then we can get out Young Red Dragon next turn. Alright, so they're going to get a boost to their next creature, but we have the Young Red Dragon. Um... Then again, if I do the treasure token, then battle cry goblin, then what I can do is I can get out devoted paladin next turn for a devastating attack instead. That actually might be better for the long term. Yeah, let's attack in with the rabble rousers then and see what they do. Okay. So let's do this, get the treasure out, and then we'll play the paladin next turn. The Paladin next turn does pretty well, even with the Shambling Ghast, so the Shambling Ghast will be able to take out one Rabble Rouser, but not two of them. I could also just play Mephit's Humiliation, and then have the uh, Devoted Paladin get boosted up when I play it out next turn. This is only Sorcery Speed, so I'd have to do it pre-combat. Which is the interesting thing. Um, they don't have any combat tricks that would give Shambling Gas the ability to survive it. And it might be better just to get in with as much damage as I can do now. And I can activate Pack Tactics with the Rabble Rousers. So I think we do this. Kill it. They can't kill any of our creatures with the minus one, minus one, so I don't think that they want to do that, unless they want to get rid of pack tactics here, so. Alright, so we'll resolve that, I guess. Do the pump. So they prevent pack tactics from activating, but they don't get the treasure, and our devoted paladin is going to be super big this coming turn, so I think they might be dead. Um, I guess we didn't give it haste of the war caller yet, so I guess we can't attack with it this turn. I could see if maybe they want to try and trade with a battle cry goblin. Maybe we can just do the pump action here with our creatures to get past the dragon. So 
can pump the rabble rousers to be to three power. They can block one of them. We deal five damage. Or we can take out the we can put out the devoted paladin. Pump everything by one and get in for five damage. I think the paladin would be better. Let's do the paladin pre-combat, give everything vigilance. Make the paladin a nice beefy creature, so. And get in with pack tactics. So we're gonna put in at least six damage here, I think, with the token doing its thing, so. Yeah, they're really in a corner now. I don't think there's anything they can do to win. They do have their 4-4 flyer, but they need a way to block three of our creatures because the Rabble Rousers can pump for extra damage. So they need either like a removal spell or something here. Um, let's see if they have a removal spell. So let's go and get in there. Attack with everything, and we can pump the Rabble Rousers to deal enough damage here if they don't block them. Alright, so let's see. Alright, well we win. <laughs> I thought that maybe they might have removal or a combat trick there of some kind that would allow them to survive, but I guess they were just kind of waiting and deciding on what we were going to do there, so... Hey, we went 2-1. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the second matchup was obviously kind of tough when they have the um, the Altar of Ball getting back a lot of value with that card and surprise creatures and such, but I think 2 one's still a pretty good result for this kind of deck. You know, we were able to get in there with our aggro and uh, do pretty well. All of our creatures did pretty well there. Um, and uh, as I've mentioned in comments on a couple of other draft videos before, the uh, Kobold War Collar works really well with the Devoted Paladin to allow it to get in there. It's like a 5-5 five, five creature right when you get it out with Vigilance. So give a big fat creature haste like the Devoted Paladin or one of your dragon creatures and it can do really well. Alright, so let's go ahead and open these packs up and see what cards that we get. I think there might have been another pack from some other thing that I was doing, but let's see what the packs produce here and what I would maybe first pick in a draft format here. Signature spells. This is maybe more of a constructed card than it is like a format type card. Plus blue isn't usually that strong in most formats. In particular this format, it's not very strong for blue, but but yeah, I mean, it's still a pretty good card because if you do a constructed deck with lots of red, white, or um, red, blue instants and sorceries, then this can be very, very strong in that kind of deck. Schoolport Merchant's probably the best card here, though. That's what I would take if I was going to be first picking. It's a very good build around, good blocker, draws cards, very good in red, black, and uh, red, green, too, can be pretty good. Morden's Disciples is a decent sort of tap-down aggressive card with double team, but not what it would be first picking. Red white in a red white aggro deck, it could be a decent card if you have lots of double team cards and like Liara of the Flaming Fist uh, pump up stuff. So, so yeah, those are the two major cards here. Clever Conjurer's ramp for blue decks. Like if you want to get out some dragons early, that can be a pretty good card for that. No Hunter is a Halfway decent two drop in green, but not really something that's a priority in this format. Let's see what we get here, and then that, and that. Ooh, Baba Lagasa is um, a very strong card that would definitely be worth first picking and building around. It's a very good in the green black sacrifice. Um. Yeah, so you can generate lots of tokens in green, and then you can sacrifice with black cards, and then you can get back stuff from your graveyard with, like, Summon Undead and things like that, so it can be very strong. This is a very good pack in general. Rally Maneuver is a pretty good combat trick. It can be, you know, a two-for-one special, as well as being good in the green-white life game deck if you have, like, Unicorns and the Trellisala, uh, 
Trellisara Cleric. Sepulchre Ghoul wants to be in the same deck as Baby Baba Lagasa, so you can hope to maybe wheel the Ghoul. And then Kobold Warcaller is pretty awesome for the Red White or Red Black aggro decks. So, very good pack, but Baba Lagasa or Lasaga, geez, I'm pronouncing that all wrong. Lagasa sounds better than Lasaga. <laughs> Baba Lasaga is what I would first pick there easily. Very good build around you sacrifice like a Shambling Ghast or some. Uh, even like a, an artifact like Navigation Orb you can sacrifice to Baba Lagasa or Pilgrim's Eye can be very great for that. Then with this one we get ooh, Clement. It's a pretty awesome specialized card for only two mana. So that would probably be what I first picked there. It's a very good card. Goes well in aggro decks. Also is, just has some nice specialized abilities here. You can create stuff to sacrifice in black. You can go ahead and get double strike and punish removal with this one. With this one, you can make a nice big fat creature to attack with or block with. Then with this one, you can give something lifelink and make it really good for the life gain deck in green white. So, yeah, that's a very strong card. Oh, and the. The Innkeeper and the Dragon's Fire in that pack were also very strong before I accidentally clicked. They're both very strong in their respective sort of archetypes, green, white, life gain, or treasure token generation, and then red removal is obviously strong, so. And then this pack is also not as strong as the other packs, so we have a very good card here in OG, which is another one of those legendary creature type things, and uh, it's very good with the end of the battlefield type effect type decks that want to go ahead and blink creatures in and out in blue white. So if you have like the um, the three three creature with the protection fighting style that blinks a creature in and out, this gives you extra value with that, and then you can build it around with like the priest of ancient lore that gives you an into into the battlefield effect. That can be very good in this blue white sort of deck to get you card draw value and life gain and. Maybe you can have like a Celestial Unicorn in a deck like this too with a consistent life gain they can get. Other good picks in here would probably be Arcane Archery. This has been a pretty good, um, it can be a very good combat trick. That's kind of very multifaceted, instant speed, and can pump up on your next creature that you get out. So if you want to go ahead and trade off one creature that you have, or maybe use it to make a very advantageous block to take out one of their creatures, the opposing creature, then you can use this to pump up the next creature you get out that you know you have in your hand. So it's a, it's definitely a card that probably wasn't given the proper respect early on in the format. But from what I've seen, other Magic the Gathering players have been giving this card much more props uh, more recently. So they've kind of figured out this card is actually pretty good for a combat trick. So multifaceted is obviously great. So. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. I hope everyone enjoyed it, um, and I hope that you all will go ahead and join me next time for either my next Magic the Gathering video. Maybe I'll get to one of my decks before the format sort of rotates in and out with the new formats coming in and the way that Standard is going to change in the next couple of weeks. So if I'm going to get to the decks that I have to show you, then I have to get to them pretty soon, which is probably what I'm going to do maybe over the weekend. I don't know, but... Uh, Whatever the case, I hope everyone joins me next time and hope everyone had fun watching this draft. We went 2-1 with a nice red-white aggro deck, and I really enjoyed it. You know, aggro decks are fun to play, and you get interesting cards and decisions, and you have to take calculated risks. You know, that's kind of what I like about it. You know, you know that it's a risk, but you have to take it. So, hope everyone joins me next time and enjoys uh, all the future videos that I put out, and uh, see you all next time. Take care wherever you are, and... Uh, have a good one and take care.